trick-or-treating us. We had people bringing us stuff. Mm. And, I mean, the candy loads were phenomenal. Let's put it that way. People were very generous in their giving. I think with uh, all the isolation and, you know, people in quarantine, I feel like they're just uh, just happy to make these huge treat bags to hand out. I think everybody was on that mission this year. Amy Eiler said a lot of her friends and relatives were doing that, too, the reverse trick-or-treating, coming and dropping off candy for oh, the kids. Really? So that was super cool, yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely fabulous. And what a fun thing for the kids. I mean, Luke was just as excited to receive that candy as he was to go to Grandma's house and ask for it. So mm. I thought that that was just perfect. Anybody bring Richie anything? Um, I think that he had a few Reese's. Yeah, oh. I think, I mean, he's not he's not struggling. Let's say that. <laughs> well, I was going to make sure somebody's got to, everybody's always so worried about you and the kids. Somebody's got to right. be worried I about Right, I know. Richie. And he's been complaining that he thinks that he's probably eaten too much Halloween candy. So I think everybody's probably had their fill at this point. Yeah, pro tip for, uh, from a mom, if you have a lot of extra chocolate, freeze some of it and then just take Absolutely. it out of the... Absolutely. Either eat it frozen or take it out in a few months and you still have that fresh chocolate. Make that last. Yes, I'm all about that. You know, we don't need to eat it all at once and so on. Uh, but the kids did fine. We'll say that. They did just fine when it came to fill in their buckets. So they're well stocked. Let's talk about stocking other things. I mean, are we supposed to be stocking up as the pandemic has been ramping up here and it's going to be a long winter, Sarah? Well, it's interesting that this is all coming about and that we're visiting about this again because this is a topic that we brought up so much throughout March and April when we were talking about stockpiling, supplies running low and whatnot. And now that we're seeing the second wave come through, according to Progressive Grocer, more than half of Americans are planning to stockpile this fall. And so they're worried about an increase in infection rates. They're worried about a lot of these products not being available again. And so more than 50% of Americans are planning to stockpile again this fall, I think, worried about another shutdown occurring. Mm. So what are they stocking up on? What is America buying? Are they buying toilet paper again? Bonnie uh, just finally started getting her chicken gumbo soup back <laughs> again. It's true. And so you're, you're right, Doug. It's a lot of the same things that we were seeing earlier on that, you know, went into short supply. I mean, the antibacterial wipes, the Lysols, the toilet paper, all of those things that were in really, really high demand and continue to be are some of those items that they're stocking up on. You know, 38% of consumers who stocked up at the beginning of the pandemic say they would do it again. And then 15% of consumers who weren't stocking up at the pandemic would do so now. Well, and so that brings it to over half of the Americans that, you know, are saying, I want to make sure I'm prepared for this. Well, no one wants to run out of toilet paper. That was a serious deal for a lot of people. Here's the thing, though. on uh, it, Maybe it's different when you do your shopping over in the Jamestown area, but here in Fargo-Moorhead, uh, they have limits usually on hand sanitizer. You can only buy one. But it is still really, really hard to buy, say, a Lysol spray or sanitizing wipes. You might find them one time, but you might not find them your next four or five trips to the store, Sarah. Absolutely. I feel like it's like winning the lottery when you're able to come home with maybe like a couple things of wipes and, uh, and a Lysol or something like that. It's the exact same way. And they have limits, you know, it's limit one and they have signs up that say your, your customer or your friends are going to want to be buying this too. You know, please limit yourself to one spray or one wipe and you can mix or match or take both or whatnot, but you can only have one of each for sure. And then when I was over in the Bismarck area and walked into a couple of stores, I noticed that they were having the same signage put up. And so, I mean, I think stores and retailers right now are really trying to kind of spread the wealth and trying to make sure that everybody gets some and trying to, um, you know, be prepared. Because that's one of the big things that came out of this progressive grocer article is that retailers really need to be prepared for this to be occurring again. And so, you know, the Walmart CEO was saying it's probably going to be choppy for a couple of months. And I think they're doing their best to try to get ahead of it and not let it get ahead of them like it did back in March. Well, what do we what, what do we stock up and how much do we get? Do we want to have two <laughs> 48 packs of toilet paper standing by, a couple things of paper towels, the multi-packs or what? Well, that's just it. You know, and they were saying hand sanitizer, like you were saying, masks, gloves, those are super in-demand items. Um School supplies are another one because oh, uh, because really? I'm sure that people are worried. You know, I mean, I think the virtual learning has lasted longer than anybody was hoping it was sure. ever going mm. to. And so that's another one that's been hot on the item list. And, Kleenex you know, with cold yeah. flu season on top of COVID. And so you look at a lot of those items, and I think that people who went without – for, you know, X number of weeks this spring are thinking, okay, I don't want to do that again. And so then now I'm just going to stockpile. 
you hearing anything on the on the like the food side of it, like on chicken gumbo soup, <laughs> on beef or steak or burger, like we had last spring? And I haven't heard anything on the food side. And so I'm not exactly sure what's all taking place there. I know for myself, when I go into the stores now, um, most all items are pretty readily available. I know if I do like an online grocery pickup and I'll just, you know, put in my order and go to the grocery store and pick it up. Most everything has been in stock. I know back this spring, it was really hard. You would put stuff in and it would say this item's not available or you'd, you know, try to order this cut of meat or whatever and that wasn't available and for the most part, I've been running into fewer and fewer of those issues now. I mean, if we do undergo a shutdown and if we do undergo a, another, you know, major second wave where we're impacting a lot, a lot of business, I'm, that's not to say that that's off the table. We might be seeing more of those challenges of trying to get what you want. But I think retails and grocers have learned something. It's all about limits. Had, had there been limits right away? You know, you learn as you go mm-hmm. along here. Had there been yep. limits right away, we might not have been totally depleted of certain things where people were buying, you know, four, five, six cases of toilet paper. There might have still been some for others on the shelves. So I I think those limits that they instituted really, uh, really helped a lot with certain items. Absolutely. And we need to remember that our supply chain is in a much better situation. So our supply chain was doing all of this food service and now it's focusing mostly on retail. So it isn't going to take nearly as long for that supply chain to be catching up. Not to mention a lot of... People started ordering online too, Sarah. That's that's helped keep more stock, I suppose, on the local shelves if people are ordering some of those essentials online. Absolutely. And so, I mean, I think we're just in a much better situation. March and April kind of took us off guard, right? I mean, that was a, a big, big shift and big, big move. But now that the food supply is looking mostly at retail, we're in a much better situation. Right there, folks. That's why we love to spend Monday mornings in Medina. Our KFJO Farm and Ranch Director, Sarah Heinrich, will catch up with you at 725. We'll see you in the next hour. You bet. 647, 94.